guys made the most of the bye week, and, and yet it was good to get back this week and get going. And, and obviously there's excitement, you know, excitement to get playing again, excitement to start Big Ten play. Um, obviously, you know, looking forward to playing a really good, well-coached team in Michigan. And yet, I like the way the guys are prepared, and we got to finish that up and, and looking forward to Saturday. Well, at the beginning of the year, you knew you had to replace Alec Engel at fullback, mm -hmm. and plus you're a little thin at tight end. What have um, the combination of Stocky and Chanel been able to give you? I know it's early. But yeah. It's no, I, I mean, it's, it, it is early, but it's been obviously very valuable. And, um, you know, had an idea with Mason, and yet I think that he's, it's been fun to see his growth, growth probably through comfort, you, you know, and understanding of it. And, and then, you know, John, we were, you know, did a lot of things last year as a freshman that got you, well, okay, this could be some of it. And I think the same thing, you know, he's got a sense of what he, what he's being asked to do, how to do it, and, uh, and those two, as you, as you know, you know, we didn't maybe go into the season thinking they'd play as much or their role would necessarily be what it is now. And, and you know, as we go forward, probably gets bigger, not smaller. And I don't have to single out Mason, but has he become a good guy at the point of attack in the running game to put it away? Yeah, he's done a nice job. And, and um, you know, it's been through, you know, he's worked his tail off on it. But, yeah, I think that he's done a really good job. You know, he's a heck of a running back. and, and High school. I think part of that is just kind of your vision, you know, and understanding. And you know, I think in many ways, you know, what fullback has changed probably since, you know, back when we had uh, Billy Rentmeester and Press, and you know, what I mean, where it's just it was pretty, a little bit more straightforward. And you were the huge blow-up shots, and uh, those guys were pretty good at those, right? And and yet it's different. And I think having that that vision, you're seeing a lot of different types of defenses, and and so I think. You know, Mace has done a good job of, of learning how to do that and yet still be physical when there is, you know, you're at that point of contact. Paul, I know you weren't here when this program started recruiting Zach Bond, but came at the end. Uh, you know, he was a guy that didn't play a lot of defense in high school. Right. Is there still value in just recruiting an athletic kid and finding the right fit for him? Would you see him? I think there's a ton of value in that. And, you know, we were going back, and I think it was if you took a look at last year's uh, linebackers all were starting quarterbacks, you know, and, and it doesn't mean you should just go recruit. And I like that linebacker group. You know, unfortunately, I don't think you can just say, okay, let's go recruit just the quarterbacks. But if you're a, if I'm a high school coach, I'm gonna put my best player at quarterback. You know, T.J. Watt was one, Zach obviously, Connolly, Edwards, Gink was, you, you know, so what he is is he's, I've loved seeing his growth and, and kind of how he's, matured on and off the field quite honestly and uh, you know was a good really good basketball player and you know good football player and and yet when he had a chance to kind of lock in and focus on it it's been fun I think he's also benefited from being around you know he's you think about the room that he's been in outside backers the guys that have been in that room who he's been sitting side by side with that's a it's a good group but he was also give him credit he's smart enough to learn from him and uh, you know, I think it, you know, Zach is truly one of those guys, if we're going to be the best team we could be and the best defense, he's got to be a big part of it. Paul, when you put together a recruiting class, do you go in with the hope that a certain number of guys in this class will contribute right away? I know there are a lot of factors that go into it, but you, you have a few that are playing as true freshmen this year. It seems to happen every year. Yeah, I, I don't know that you, um, you, know, you always try to, you know, recruit the best class you can, and, and when you say that, it's, you know, probably the, it's how do you get the guys that fit, right? And and I think that, you know, the way it works out, I don't know if you would be always accurate of saying if when the day they sign, if you say, okay, these, whatever number are the, he's a early contributor, he's an early contributor. I don't know that you know, you know, it's not until they get on campus and, you know, you start to see how they adjust to it, obviously every player you, you recruit and sign, you think at some point will contribute significantly. But I don't, I don't think that, at least I'm not to the point where I could just say, yeah, I know this guy, he'll be an early contributor. Positions, some lend themselves to helping it, you know, or to play earlier. Um, you know, a lot of guys play on special teams early. And, you know, 
certainly your linemen, you know, aren't probably as eligible for many of those. So it's, uh, I don't know that it's that clean. We say, yeah, this is going to be immediate impact guy or not. When you bring in a guy like Zach Vaughn and you, you don't know how he's going to turn out an outside linebacker, how do you determine whether to be patient and let him develop there? Because there's some guys that are coming like Stocky, yep. who's a linebacker, and then it's like, okay, well, let's see how he's at fullback. Was, was there ever any talk with saying to Zach, well, maybe we should try a different position as he was developing? Yeah, there wasn't with Zach exactly. specifically. Okay. Uh, absolutely, it happened. And I think where it happens is, you know, especially for guys that, okay, this is a new position. Okay. And you try to see how, how does it take and are they progressing and do they feel comfortable? And quite honestly, part of that is, do, are they enjoying it? You know what I mean? Do they enjoy playing that? And then I think it gets to where, you know, there comes a point, it's, it, I bet you a lot of times it's mutual when there's maybe a void at one position and maybe a little bit more depth at another. There's, you know what, you got a chance to, you know, bad term, but move up the depth chart going to the other side, guys will do that. And I don't think, you know, any position move you make, it has to be good for the team and good for the player, right? If, the, if it's good for both, then it, those are good moves. And, you know, Mason's was a good example of it, you know, didn't have, didn't know what, you know, John Chanel would be. And, and yet, you know, last year, you know, other than Alec, we didn't really have anyone that played it and, and where Mace was at. And really kind of, I think the injuries, you know, kind of changed a little bit who he was athletically, um, it was a good fit. But, but Zach was one that he just kind of kept progressing and you felt like it was a pretty good fit from the get-go, which is a credit to him because, you know, he came in and it was the first time he'd ever done a lot of those things. How do you think the offensive line has handled some of the injuries that had to sustain and some of the rotations that you guys have been able to do in the first couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I've, you know, I've been impressed with the way they handle things. I love that group and they, they work and they enjoy working together and, and, you know, there's a lot of shuffling and I think Joe does a good job, you know, whether you go back to look at spring ball or, you know, fall camp, and that's part of it because we all know that in the end, you know, they're going to have to play probably more than one position. And so I think they've handled it well and, and yet it's a group that you, I don't want to say you expect them to, because that's be taking it for granted, but it doesn't surprise you when they do handle it and it's, uh, like I said, it, I, I really do like that group a lot as far as who they are and how they work and go about things. It's only been a week without a game, but does it take a series or two to get back to game speed, or is that more of a product of game speed at a Big Ten game? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, games are different. And, you know, does it take a um, series or two, a play or two? Um, you know, you'd say no, you'd like to say no, but you know, there's probably reality to it. and. To say anything, every guy, every player wants to get into the rhythm of the game, and it. I think it's that way each week, quite honestly. You know, it's. You know, we had a bye week. You know, it's not like we haven't been doing things, but I think you're always a player looks forward to kind of. You know, you hear a phrase, you know, getting your pads set, kind of getting into the the rhythm of it. I think that's probably a real thing every game. Have you ever changed since you've been a head coach? How you during a bye week or when you do it based on maybe maybe you didn't think it was successful in the previous year or have you stuck pretty much to the consistent schedule? No, I think you're always trying to figure out, you know, what to do and how to do it. And the one thing that I don't necessarily subscribe to is, okay, because we won that game after the bye, that means everything we did was right and if we lost, everything was wrong. You, you know, the, the game is its own and another certainly, I think, could be lessons to learn, kind of like what Jay was saying. You know, d did they get into the rhythm right away, too late? Probably the makeup of players as much as what the schedule was. But I think you're always trying to find a way to make the best use of it. And, you know, I think it'd be pretty hypocritical of us as coaches if, you know, we're always asking our players to keep working and find ways to get better. And if we just say, well, no, we've got the perfect schedule. We know exactly everything. There's stuff to be learned. And, and you know, this buy, we, we treat it different probably than any other buy that we have. I feel good in what we did. Um, and that's saying it regardless of what's going to happen uh, for the game.